All right, we have the uh, landing gear pretty much complete. Here's a look at it. Uh, I just need to do a little bit of uh, filler work around that second blister. Uh, let's see if I can get more light on that. <clears throat> you can see the opening on the one side is a little large. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, the, uh, the gear is done. Again, I'll just need to um, just clean up that second blister area a little bit. And this is a uh, this is the current state of our uh, of our project. Um, and so the way the gear was constructed was that uh, let's get the cradle out. So we have the airplane uh, inverted. Let's see if I can get it to rest. There we go. And you need something to uh, determine the length of these struts, and that's not it. Uh, what do I do? Here it is. Ah, this is what happens whenever I get the camera out. Do -do -do. Ermagird. Okay, so uh, you need something to determine the length of the strut. And what I do is I just cut a piece of balsa that's uh, pretty good. Uh, you know, doesn't have to be perfect, but close. And off of that, you can make other measurements. But I just want to find that length. We uh, hold the blister in place and drill the holes for the piano wire core. And then using this, we bend the core, we bend that piano wire. We just leave this length of it straight, cut the piece just about a quarter of an inch longer with an eighth inch bend at each end. So an eighth inch bend down into the fuselage and an eighth inch bend uh, to the side into the gear. And that gives us our, uh, our piano wire uh, strut core and when we want to cut the strut we use the same piece of metal since we know that's pretty much the exact length we want it to be and we cut at an angle using our miter box and razor saw and we cut at the 45 degree angle that gives us this angle and this angle we just make them the two cuts parallel keep it in mind you want the leading edge of this airfoil shape in the front and the trailing edge, the skinny edge in the back. So you have to make a left and a right hand piece. If that makes sense, um, then you slide it over the wire, drop the rear end into the fuselage and glue it, sliding the, uh, the airfoil as far forward as you can. And then as you move the back or the, um, the front end into position, you slide the um, the piece back until it makes contact with the blister, and your piano core should uh, piano wire core should uh, drop right into the holes you've drilled in the landing gear. And that's pretty much it. That's that's how you do that. Securing it at the back end first, and then maneuvering it into the gear. And the idea is to get it cut <clears throat> to the same length and fit it so that the struts are neither pushing out against the gear or where you would need to pull in against the strut. Anything like that is going to d destroy your already established landing gear geometry. So now we still have our gear. Let's see if I can get a, a look at that. So it's parallel to the fuselage. They're parallel to each other. They're towed out just slightly as they should be. Camber, I think is what I'm talking about here, how they, the gear tilts. It's not vertical straight up and down. It's just slightly outward canted uh, in the vertical uh, plane. Not towed in, right? Straight ahead for a good alignment. 
and that you have the same uh, horizontal plane on both sides. The horizontal is the same. You're not tilted too far back, which would cause the rear end of the fairing to touch the ground when it's in three-point stance, and you don't want them canted too far forward with the t trailing edge too high up, giving it an awkward in-flight appearance. So in-flight, this is what you want, and on the ground, in its three-point attitude, you want those fairings up off the ground. And keep in mind that this, this air, airplane did sit pretty low on its tires. In other words, those axles were uh, fairly high in the fairing with a fairly minimal reveal of the tires and wheels, right? They were tucked up in there pretty good. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, here's our tail wheel. I don't know if you can see all that. It really depends on the kind of the combination of the background and the foreground. I don't know. Hey, I'm not a camera guy. Anyway, um, that looks pretty good. And all I have to do now is to use a little filler and uh, and square that up. I did get a slight angle on that blister. I might I might try to pull that off and reset that. Let's now now that I'm looking at it, let's a little tilt it upward there. Let me see what I can do. Maybe I can fix that. I should be able to just slice it up and slice it away from the fuselage and, re and correct that. I hope I can do that. If not, it's not the end of the world. I can use filler and kind of shape it a little bit that way. But um, let me see if I can. I might be able to fix that. Now that I look at it, it looks a little off. But hey, you know, overall, got the gear on there. Uh, as I've said a million times, it's going to be hell to paint this thing uh, properly. But we're going to do the best we can do. Uh, you know, out of re regard for the Lockheed Aircraft Company and and Northrop, who designed it, and Wiley Post and Amelia Earhart and uh, oh, what's his name, <laughs> the Gilmore pilot. Um, wow, I can't. I'm drawing a blank on his name again. Anyway. Um, Hey, don't don't get old. Uh, so I'm out of respect to the the, the famous pilots, the famous um, inventor, uh, designers, and contributors, engineers who worked on the aircraft project, the original Lockheed Vega. Uh, I want to do the best job I can do, and try to get this right. Now, will it be perfect? Yeah, no. Um, but it'll be the best job I can do. All right. Uh, we'll reconvene later.